Matrices and Transformation, KCC 2015, Paper 2, a quadrilateral with vertices K11, L41, M23, and N13 is transformed by a matrix T1031 to a quadrilateral. The image is given there, K prime, L prime, M prime, N prime. Part A, determine the coordinates of the image, three marks. B, on the grid provided, draw the object and the image, two marks. C part 1, describe fully transformation with maps KLMN onto that image, 2 marks. Then part 2, determine the area of the image, 1 mark. And part D, find the matrix which maps K prime, L prime, M prime, N prime onto the object that is KLMN. So that is the question. Let's go to the first part. In the first part, you are supposed to determine the coordinates of the image. So you have the object, which is um, KLMN, you're given the coordinates, then you're given the matrix of transformation, you're supposed to find the image. So to do that, we simply take the matrix of transformation, we pre-multiply. We take the matrix of transformation, which is T, and then multiply it with the object, we get the image. So the matrix of transformation should come first. So let's go to the workings. So we shall take the matrix. The matrix uh, was 1, 0, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, which is K prime, L prime, M prime, and N prime. That. So that is what we are supposed to do. So that is uh, how we get the coordinates. So just confirming the matrix is there. You pre multiply, it should come before. So this one should be 1, 1. This is uh, 4, 1, this is 2, 3, and this is 1, 3. So you know how to multiply these. So row 1 multiply by column 1, 1 times 3, uh, 1 times 1, take 1 times 1, which is 1, plus 3 times 1. So that would be 1 plus 3, which would be 4. You do the same for all the others. Uh, or 1 column 2 this is 4 plus 3 which will give you 7 then row 1 column 3 this is 2 plus 9 which will give 11 then 1 plus 9 which will give 10 then you go to row 2 row 2 column 1 this is 0 this is 1 until you get 1 this one will be 1 this will be 3 and this will be 3 so we have not yet given the answer. We are supposed to give the coordinates. The coordinates. So the coordinates are supposed to be written in this form. K prime, which is uh, 4, 1. And then L prime. The coordinates for L prime should be 7, 1. And then M prime. 11 3 and n prime which will be 10 3 so this is the right way and this is how we're supposed to write the coordinates and after doing that we can go to part b and uh, for part b you're supposed to draw the object and the image draw the object and the image plot the object and the image so we have uh, the object we start the object that is k11 so k11 should be there so 11 should be here that is k then l is 41 l is 41 then m is 23 23 23 should be here that is m and then n 13 and is 1, 3. So 1, 3, like that. 
so we can join these So that is the object. Let's go to the image. The image is here. K prime is 41. 41. 41 is the same place with L. So this is a K prime. Then L is 71. 71 is L prime. Then M prime is 113. 113. 113 is here. That is a M prime. Is there then n prime is a 10 3 10 3 should be there n prime so we join these so k to l k prime to l prime is there and then um, l to m is l prime to m prime is there then K prime to N like that and then we complete it like that so there we have the object and the image We've done that now we can go to the next part of the question so we're done with part 2 so C part one describe fully the transformation which maps the object to the image to max. Describe the transformation which maps. So we're supposed to describe the transformation that maps these to these. This is the object, this is the image. So when you are finding the transformation, you need to think of all the transformations rotation reflection uh, enlargement and one thing you should have in mind there are those transformations that do not change the shape and the size there are those that change the size but not the shape so when you look at rotation it doesn't change the shape and the size enlargement doesn't change the shape only the size but in this particular one you can see the shape has been altered the shape has been altered um, the transformation which alters the shape and that depicts this kind of movement because you can see the movement look at each and every point uh, look at K it is moving parallel to the Y to the X axis K is moving parallel to the X axis L is moving look at where L is L prime Look at where N is, look at N prime, M and its image. So you can see the movement is parallel to, this is how the movement is. You can draw something here. So the movement is parallel to the X axis and um, the shape has been altered. So the transformation that depicts this kind of uh, property is the shear so this one is a shear and it is a shear that moves the point parallel to the x-axis so when you're describing shear you must mention the invariant line the invariant line and in this case the invariant line is the x-axis the x-axis now you may be asking yourself how did we identify x-axis as the invariant line this is how you identify the invariant line in a shear you simply take uh, you can choose uh, any line like for example i can take kn kn i join it to its image that is k prime n prime just extend these lines so i'll start by extending kn extend kn like that 
and then extend k prime n prime extend it now when you extend that line where do those two lines meet they meet at this point they meet on which line the x-axis and therefore that is why we take the x-axis as the invariant line so when you join when you extend this line and you extend this line where the two lines meet they are meeting on a line that is the invariant so this line is therefore the invariant where these lines are meeting that is how you identify the invariant line it's good to note that points on the invariant line do not move or they do not change now after identifying the invariant line as the x-axis you need something else to describe a shear so we describe this transformation as a shear and we gave the invariant line as the x-axis because you can see that the points are moving parallel to a fixed line and this line is the x-axis look at this point they are moving parallel to the x-axis and that is the invariant line another thing that you need to mention is you must give an object point and its image that is not on the invariant line just choose a point that is not uh, an object and an image that is not on the invariant line i will choose m so you can give uh, m which is a uh, 2 3 that is the object then it is mapped onto it is mapped onto m prime which is uh, 11 3 11 3 so that is the second way or you can also describe a shear by giving the shear factor how do you get the shear factor like in this case now to get the shear factor it's quite easy you simply take um, the distance of you can choose a point like i can choose a point like m m2 m prime then you divide by the perpendicular distance the perpendicular distance of the object of the object from the invariant from the invariant line i'll explain this so let me take um this distance m to m prime so just count the number of squares one two three four five six seven eight nine so from m to m prime that is that is nine units then this is uh, the perpendicular distance of the object which object i'll take for example m m is the object from the invariant line so look at this perpendicular distance this is the perpendicular distance i'm talking about from the invariant line which is the x-axis to the object this is the object m so how many squares one two three the other squares so divide by three and you get three so the shear factor is three so that is how you describe a shear fully by giving the invariant line give an object an image point not on the invariant line or you can even state the shear factor let's go to the next part uh, the next part is uh, determine the area of the image determine the area of the image determine the area of the image now there is also a very important thing that you're supposed to understand here that under a shear the area does not change under a shear the area does not change the shape might change but the area remains constant so that means if i get the area of the object it is the same area with the image no matter what under a shear the area of the object does not change so the area of the object and the image is the same so in this case to get the area this you just get the area of the object which is k l m n and uh, this is a trapezium get a the area of trapezium by a half 
times the sum of the two um, that is the area is equals to a half times the sum of the two parallel sides which is uh, 1 2 3 that is 3 plus up there we have 1 this is a 1 unit then down 1 2 3 then the height is 2 the height is 2 the height is 2 so this one will give 4 square units so that is the area of the image it does not change so the area of the object and the image remain the same under shear then the last question part d find the matrix which maps k prime l prime m prime n prime 2 that is um, simply the matrix that maps the image back to the object the image back to the object now remember we uh, we had a matrix that mapped the object to the image and that matrix was um, 1 3 0 1 that was the matrix you can see it from part a now we want the matrix now that will map this image which is uh, k prime l prime n prime n prime like that to k l m n so one thing you're supposed to understand is that the matrix that maps the image back to the object is the inverse so we need to simply get the inverse this was t so the matrix that will map the image back to the object will be the inverse of t which is t inverse and uh, this is how we get the inverse of a matrix just to remind you to get the inverse of a matrix uh, given for example you have matrix a b c d so for this so if you want to get the inverse of this matrix you get it by getting one divided by the determinant okay like that and then you interchange these values like this d this is b minus b this is minus c and this is a this is how we get the inverse of any general matrix two by two matrix if you have a matrix a b c d you are supposed to get the inverse of this matrix you get it by getting one divided by the determinant then look at how we interchange these values so these are diagonal the values are interchanged okay then for this one they change the signs so now uh, you have t which is uh, 1 3 0 1 so you start by getting the determinant so the determinant is given by 1 times 1 this is a product of this row minus 0 times 3 like that which will give um, 1 so the determinant is 1 so therefore the inverse of the inverse of t will be given by the inverse of t will therefore be given by 1 divided by the determinant and then look at the way we interchange these values here so we've noted this um, this diagonal here the values are interchanged so this is 1 1 it will remain as 1 1 and then what is happening to these uh, diagonal here b c minus b they change the signs so we change the signs of these so this will be minus 3 and this one will just remain the same like that so therefore the matrix that will map the image back to the object will be 1 negative 3 0 and 1 so that is how you're supposed to solve that question